Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to make your demand for your daily bread? Release your faith now and say with me, say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. Give it to me, Lord, and I receive it because I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And it's coming to you now. A miracle is taking place in your life. Praise God. All right. So we are in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Father, we thank you. Let the heavens be open over us right now. And I declare every body is lifted. Yokes are destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, and I said, he said, But the fruit of the Spirit is... Now, he wasn't listing the many fruits of the Spirit. So he's not talking about many fruits. No, no, that's not what he's saying. He was listing the qualities of the fruits of the Spirit. See, for example, if I want to describe mango for you, see, I'll tell you, oh, the shape is not, not completely round. It's, it's more of oval and, and you understand? And I'll tell you, oh, it's, its seed is like this. It, the, it has a peel and then it, it has this. So when I'm listing all that qualities to describe what the mango seed is, fruit is. Now, I'm not telling you different kind of fruits for mango. I'm telling you, uh, this is how you know mango fruit. It has a back and when you're eating it, you may take off the back or some people eat the back and you know, eat it. And then there's the inner part and then there's the seed. And then even in the seed, there is some substance in the seed. So all I'm doing is describing one fruit. Now, that's exactly what he's doing here. So he says, the kind of fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. Now, how does the Holy Spirit produce the fruit? He produces it in us. Now, this is the reason in Proverbs 8, he says, look, my desire has always been with the sons of men. That's the Holy Spirit talking. He said, my desire has always been with the sons of men. I've always loved to be in, in them, you see? So it wasn't just Jesus that prayed, Holy Spirit, come and dwell in them. No, he, he was waiting. The Holy Ghost was just waiting all the while. Look, I, allow me to dwell in these people. Allow me to walk in them. Why? Because, see, he brings forth this fruit in us. We are, oh, my sheep, I did. We, we give the Holy Spirit body. You know, sometimes we are so passionate. Holy Spirit, feel me. Holy Spirit, feel. You don't realize that he too, like, come on now. I want to feel you, praise God. Why? Because I want to bring forth the fruit. See, listen, without us, he becomes limited in his function on the earth we give him expression can you handle that we give him expression he walks in us and produces this fruit and we manifest this fruit and he looks at us and says, yeah, praise God. That's it. You may have wonderful ideas in your mind, but you can never be 
as excited as when you see that idea take up a body and is working. You may have an idea to manufacture something wonderful. But let me tell you the truth. There is the greater joy is when you see that that idea has been put to work and you watch it go in there and you say, there goes my idea. It's workable. It's real. Praise God. That is where the excitement is. So listen, God is excited being himself. But I'll tell you this. There is no joy. It's, it's in, an incomparable joy in him when he sees us manifesting his personality. I, I, I mean, it, there goes, there, there goes my own. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There goes my character. This is, hey, listen, listen. And I told you, I told you last week, Jesus was first called the branch. The book of Zechariah called him the branch. Now, as the branch, what was he doing? He was bearing fruits. He bore the fruit of God. Now, he tells us here that the quality of the fruit is this. You will find love. So, love is not a different fruit from joy. No, no. It's the same singular fruit that we've been called to produce. So, the fruit we have been called to produce is one. Not many. One fruit. If you do every other thing and don't produce this fruit, then you are not part of the kingdom of heaven. True. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing. And this becomes our identity. And this is what shows who and who is going to heaven. I'm telling you the truth. So he says, love, is there love in you? The fruit you carry, can one bear testimony of love? Joy, thank you Holy Spirit. Peace, long suffering, gentleness now you know you can take up another translation they are still saying the same thing maybe for the explanation goodness he's good see just like proverbs the book of proverbs 31 tells us about the virtuous woman he said she will do her husband good all the days of her life did you see that all the days of her life, she will do him good. Why? Because it's her character. Faith. Or sometimes she don't say faithfulness. Faithfulness simply means being full of faith. So they are always persuaded. See, that's the fruit of the spirit. You're always persuaded to take up things for the Lord, to believe the Lord and to act on his word. You know, you're not always waiting for someone to come and encourage you. Say, oh, brother, look, you have to, you have, the moment you get to that point where somebody has to encourage you to go to church, someone has to encourage you to listen to the word of God again, you are not bearing fruits. It's as simple as that. The fruit is not being born in you. Faith. Meekness. You know what meekness is? Meekness, meek, meek, meekness is, is, is an ability, see? <laughs> meekness is when you know your strength, but you decide to subject yourself and just be normal. That is meekness. See, it's, it's, it's close to humility, but it's not the same. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then he said temperance, which is self-control. The fruit of the spirit is self-control. You've got self-control in you. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit. So that's why the Bible says in the book of Titus chapter 2, verse, verse, verse 10 and 11, or 11 and 12, it says, the grace of God that appears to all men, that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And that grace teaches us to say no to every ungodliness. What's it? Self-control. The grace of God 
brings self-control. In our heart, it tells us, like, hey, you can say no. Some say, I don't just know how to say no. You're missing self-control. You're missing the fruit. You're missing the fruit. You have the ability to say no. It doesn't matter what happened. Everything you give your consent to, you had the ability to say no. That's why he told us, have you resisted unto blood? Have you resisted it to the point of shedding blood? Have you? So we have the ability to have self-control. Deploy it. Now, he said, Jesus speaking, he says, look, I have ordained you so that you will bear fruit. These are the fruits he was talking about. He wasn't talking about going out for evangelism and winning souls. and That's important. That has its place. It's important we do that. Because, you see, the more we evangelize, but, you see, let's not forget the point. When we go out and we win souls, it's not just to populate our churches. It's not just that we have more Christians now. No, sir. It is that many more will submit themselves to the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit will begin to bear the fruit of our life in them. Now, this is why you find people say, oh, there are many churches in this country or in this town, but we are not seeing the kind of impact that we are supposed to see. The reason is simple. Many people go to church, but how many are connected to the Holy Spirit to the point where their bodies, they being the branch, are bearing the fruit? Now, think about all these things he listed here. He says, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Think about this. Just, just think about one of them per time and put them together and tell me what can stand against this. Tell me. What can you bring against this fruit? What, what, what law can you put against this fruit? You want to get him angry? He's got love. See? You want to put him down? He's got joy. Throw anything at him. He's got joy. Hey, listen. Joy. Joy is a work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a work of something that happening outside. No, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. You are supposed to be constantly in joy. Praise God. Yes, it, it's a fruit you bear. And let me say something, you don't have to fake it. You don't have to fake it until, you, until it becomes real. No, you don't have to, have to fake it. You all you just need to do is set your mind on the Spirit of God. He knows how to get this thing done. He knows because he's the one producing the fruit in you. Now, because it's the Holy Spirit producing the fruit in you, I'll tell you this. It, it takes a great deal of resistance from a child of God not to produce this fruit. I said, oh, I thought it's the other way around. No. Because you're not the one forcing the fruits on yourself. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in you that pushes out the fruit. But the manifestation of the fruit is seen in us. So when I look at you, I'm looking for fruit. When God looks at you, he's looking for fruit. Are you getting this thing now? If he doesn't see the fruit. Okay, what if I have love, joy, but I don't have long suffering? Hey, there's something wrong with your fruit. Okay, I have long suffering, but I just don't have self-control. Something is wrong with your fruit. It's like seeing a deficient mango fruit. You look at it, and it, it, this is not supposed to be this color. Something is wrong. It's a diseased fruit. And when you find a diseased fruit, you should know that the branch has a problem. We are the branches. If we yield ourselves to the Lord completely, we will produce all these fruits. Praise God. It, it, we will see it working in us, complete. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, our time is up. Ah. <sighs> Well, listen, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.